lithium, cobalt, nickel, copper, all of which essential for the electric car, hardly any of which will be able to produce enough to meet demand by the 2035 transition year. Hell, we can't even produce enough copper for the current demand, let alone what's projected for the future. Now, this is a very broad topic. There's a lot of information to go over. And to keep this from becoming an hour-long documentary, which I would like to make, by the way, um, I'm just going to focus on the lithium for purposes of this video. So there's probably a question that's popped into your head already before I even get started. Aren't there many, many other things in our daily lives that use lithium ion batteries? And are those things part of the problem as well? Yes, a lot of things use lithium ion batteries. And uh, that is a valid question. Stick with me to the end. I will get to it. I promise. So according to the World Economic Forum, lithium production needs to triple by next year and be six times as much by the year 2030 to keep pace with the demand through that time period. Doesn't even mention what it needs to look like by 2035. Another question that may have just popped into your head, didn't Elon Musk tell everyone on the Joe Rogan experience that lithium is both common and abundant? Extremely common. Is it? Yeah. Lithium's everywhere. Lithium's one of the most common elements in the, in, in the universe. It's at number three on the periodic table. So we got lithium here pretty much everywhere. Well, yes, he did. And yes, as he said, it is third most abundant on the periodic table of elements in the universe. Here on Earth, though, it's 31st. But the total estimated lithium reserves on the planet isn't really the problem. The problem is that when you do find it, it's in relatively low concentrations and is an expensive pain in the ass to retrieve it out of the earth. So right now there are two main expensive pain in the ass ways to do this. The first is traditional mining. That's you get the big machines out there, you dig in the ground, you blast it with dynamite, whatever. And in the case of lithium, you have to quarry the mineral spudumene out of the ground. Don't ask me why it's called that. But then they haul it off elsewhere to extract the lithium. And this is pretty much the way it's done in Australia, who is the current leading producer of lithium, and China. So like any other traditional mine, the vegetation gets wiped out, wildlife gets wiped out. When it's all said and done, you got a huge hole in the ground left for decades. And not to mention the air pollution that comes with it. Um, there's the safety concerns for the miners. Now, I would think because Australia is a first world developed nation, they have the resources to make safety a priority to keep that on the forefront and make sure that uh, this operation is safe for people to do. As for China, who the hell knows what goes on there? That probably ain't safe. One other side note with regards to the effects of mining lithium. Uh, a July 2024 article from greenmatch.co.uk illustrates that mining one ton of lithium yields 15 tons of CO2 emissions. Is that not the whole point of an electric car to stop CO2 emissions? This is why you have to drive your electric car on average right now at least 100,000 miles to break even on the CO2 emissions that went into making it. And that brings us to the second and more messed up way to extract lithium from the earth. That's the lithium brine extraction. This is how Chile does it. And until 2017, they were the leading producer in the world for lithium. So the lithium brine extraction method works like this. They pump the lithium-rich, salty brine out of the earth, which is in the coastal regions of Chile. They pump it into these large ponds, which turn various shades of green. And if you're looking at it from the sky, it probably looks pretty. Some might even say it looks like these algae farms, which some might say, oh, that's pretty. That's good for the environment. Well, no, it's not. That's not what that is. And then the sun, over the course of months, even a year, will evaporate the water from these ponds leaving the solids behind, which then has to be processed to extract the lithium from that, which takes more fresh water, more chemicals, yada, yada, yada. It's just ugly. Now, the stat that I keep seeing on this evaporation process is to yield one ton of lithium. You have to evaporate 450,000 gallons 
or 225 tons of water. So why is this important, you may ask? Well, in Chile, they mine the uh, lithium out of the Atacama Desert uh, coastal region. Desert is the key word there. You see, it's a dry, arid, fucking desert where some people live. Water, fresh water is a premium in a desert. And yet, they feel like it's better to use some of that fresh water that people need to survive in the lithium mining extraction operation. And then, sometimes when things don't go quite right, other fresh water supplies they may have, the hard-to-find fresh water they need to survive. Some of that gets poisoned sometimes, you know? I mean, but it's okay, though. We're getting lithium for EVs and other stuff. Are the locals compensated by the mining companies when this happens? Hell, I don't know. If it is, it's probably pennies. Pennies on the dollar. If you ask me, they would probably want their water back. You know, so they could live. So after killing off vegetation and wildlife and leaving a big hole in the ground for decades with traditional mining and uh, using and poisoning fresh water supplies and deserts where people needed to survive, worldwide we still won't be able to keep up with the projected demand by 2035 for lithium. Even with the discovery of what people think is probably the largest lithium deposit ever found right here in America on the Nevada-Oregon border inside an extinct super volcano. So this mine is a little bit different in that they'll have to use an extraction method, but instead of brine, they'll be extracting clay. They'll have to centrifuge the clay to get some of the smaller particles out. And then what's left, they'll take that clay, put it into vats of sulfuric acid to leach it from the clay. Yeah, that sounds incredibly efficient and safe. But before you get excited at the fact that there's a very huge, large deposit of lithium available, it does take four to five years for a new lithium mine to hit its stride with regards to production. So, yeah, we'll still come up short in demand. This is true. You probably carry one in your pocket every day with your cell phone. The GoPro I'm shooting on right now has a lithium-ion battery. A lot of lawn equipment is lithium-ion powered now. I got a, I got an Ego backpack leaf blower. I, I like the hell out of that thing. But are these things also part of the problem the way EVs are? In my opinion, no. And let me tell you why. Look at this data from also from the World Economic Forum. It shows that by percentage, the uses of lithium... Um, from 2010 and then again in 2021, you see the use for batteries is up by 50%. 50% in 11 years may not sound like much. Let me illustrate that figure another way. Keeping in mind that demand for lithium for EV batteries is going to continue to increase. Your cell phone battery needs about one gram of lithium to make. Your average EV battery needs about eight kilograms of lithium to make it. These are huge batteries. Now, that's 8,000 times, 8,000 times as much lithium needed for an EV battery versus, say, a cell phone, for example. You do the math, given that production is expected to need to exponentially increase by 2035 to meet this demand. There's just no way. It's kind of like this. Think of somebody who can barely pay their bills now. They take out a loan for 10 times their annual income at a 30% interest rate from Joe Blow's taco truck and savings and loan. It's just a bad, bad idea. So in my opinion, if we stopped using lithium for EV batteries and only focused on using it for the small scale uh, applications, cell phone batteries, things like that, where you don't need very much per battery, then we would probably be able over time to shut down the extraction mines that are poisoning people's water supplies, uh, we would probably be able to, with the sacrifice of some profit up front, uh, be able to clean up the traditional mining operations, make them safe, make them more efficient, and the profits will return because demand's not going away for sure. I mean, I'm not advocating for a boycott of lithium. It's, that's, that's just crazy talk. It's 
too much ingrained in our daily lives. But I think we need to stop using it in EV batteries. And there are other alternatives coming down the pike, some of which, um, you know, have a lot of upside and they're getting close to being ready for prime time. I can't, uh, I'm anxious to see how those pan out. Now, hopefully by this point, I've done my job and at least given you an understanding of how messed up I think lithium mining is for EV batteries. But if you think that is bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified when part two of this series comes out where we discuss the true tragedy that is mining cobalt. I'm JR, and I am out. <laughs>